The whole Flutter app is already fully developed. The only problem is that the Firestore database is now open to any attacks since all of the data is public. Let's fix it by writing a couple of lines of security rules. Hello, welcome to Riso Koro, where you're getting prepared for real app development so that you will get freelance clients or a job and be confident about the apps you build. So subscribe and hit the bell to join us on our quest for becoming in-demand Flutter developers. So the time is finally here. We have the whole app finished. We have finished all there is to do when it comes to the actual Flutter app in the last part where we implemented the reorderable list view right here. Uh, but the problem is that our Firestore database is absolutely insecure. Actually, uh, this part should not even exist <laughs> because it's going to be really short, just a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, but anyway, this is a topic uh, in and of itself. So let's focus on writing security rules, which are literally going to take something like three lines of code, even if we count the curly braces. So uh, once we go into the console for our Firebase project, we are going to open the Cloud Firestore tab. And uh, here we have all of our data for our one user. For example, here is a note Hello there, this is a yellow note, so uh, it's this one, it's actually not yellow anymore, but we can fix that. And you can see that it has just updated. So everything works, but the problem is inside these rules, which are completely insecure, because currently it allows reads and writes. I'm actually going to enlarge it even more than before. Hopefully you can see everything properly. Actually, it starts having some, uh, yeah, I cannot enlarge it any more than this because it starts having some artifacts, but basically uh, anybody can read and write when the date of the read or write request is less than the 30th of November, 2020. Now it's the 3rd of November at the time of recording. So what I'm going to do is delete all this with the comments and with this matching of a document. And we are going to write something uh, which is going to prevent unauthorized users from writing any data. So basically, as you could have seen inside the data tab, actually, I'm going to have to uh, continue without saving the changes, which we've just done. We have a collection of users. Then there is a user document inside that collection. And then there are some collections inside of this user document. For example, this notes collection is the only thing which is present right uh, now inside of the user document. What we want to do is to limit editing the documents which belong to a particular user to only that user when he or she is signed in. So only the user A, E, Z, 0, E, R, and so on can edit the content of the document which belongs to that particular user, right? So how can we do this inside of the security rules? Well, we can say match and now point to any sort of a user's document. So how can we do that? Well, we know that we have a user's collection which is the top level collection inside of our database and to point to any kind of a document which uh, there is inside of this collection, we can use a wildcard, something like this user ID inside of curly braces. So now this user ID part of the reference string or however you want to call this is going to point to 
any sort of a document present inside of the user's collection. And also, we are going to be able to use this user ID to find out if it matches the actual ID of the currently signed in user. However, we do not want a user to be able to edit only the document itself, but also the documents inside of the notes collection. Because if you remember, the hierarchy goes something like this. So user document has notes, and then we have some sort of a notes ID, right? But we could do something like this. So notes and then a note ID. But if sometimes in the future, we would have more collections inside of the user document. So for example, also something like, uh, I don't know, settings or something or payments, payment ID. We would need to create this kind of a matcher for every single possible sub collection that there is inside of the user document. So how can we match all of the sub collections, including payments, nodes, and anything else that there may be? Well, for that, we can use a recursive wildcard. So in order to apply the rule to any sort of a document inside of a collection, we can just say, for example, document is equal to two asterisks. And this is a recursive wildcard, which makes this rule to be applied to any sort of a document, however deeply nested inside of the hierarchy, right? So anything which is inside of the user's document or below in the hierarchy is going to be matched by this matcher and the security rules written inside of it. And uh, what do we actually want to do here? Well, it's very simple. We want to allow read and also any sort of a write if the request dot auth, so the data gotten from Firebase auth, the currently signed in user, dot UID, which stands for user ID, is equal to the user ID from our wildcard here. And this wildcard, of course, uh, tells us about the name of the document. And we want to allow user to read or write into the hierarchy of their document only if document ID matches with their user ID. All right, so now if we publish these security rules, it's going to take some time and it says that they can take up to a minute to propagate. But uh, since they are so simple, the security rules which we have written, it's going to be propagated much sooner. So let's just open up our emulator and let's just try to sign out uh, and sign back in with Google again. So this is the user which we have here. And we should be able to just read these documents just like we had read them before. But now it's done in a secure way because if we were to request these documents from a, differently, a different user which is signed in, uh, we would get an error. And this error would look something like this if we set allow read and write to be false which is always false you know so it's always going to be uh if false it's always going to be prevented the read and write so if we do something like this and then we go ahead and again sign out sign in right here now we would get unexpected error, please contact support because we were uh, denied the access to these documents. But let's revert back to what we have written. And yeah, so this is it for this absolutely short part, the shortest part in this series, I guess, where we have written the security rules for our Cloud Firestore database. 
I think that this is really it for this whole series uh, because we have written the app, we have uh, now secured the backend basically with these security rules. So uh, this is it. And I really hope that this tutorial series has helped you on your journey of becoming a great Flower developer. We have covered really a lot of ground here. Uh, advanced programming techniques, advanced architecture, value objects, which you may not even need in your apps, but it's still good to know about how to go about the DDD approach, domain driven design, when you are building your client Flutter apps. So thank you for sticking around for this long. And if you do not want to miss more tutorials like this, probably not these kinds of long series, but something shorter, some focus tutorials, which are going to push you forward on your Flutter app development journey. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and also join notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your Flutter skills because here on Resale Coder, I am absolutely determined to provide you with the best tutorials and resources so that you will become an in-demand Flutter developer. And if you are serious about becoming a great Flutter developer who can build real apps for clients or at the job, go to flutter.education. Come on. Link is also in the video description to get the top curated Flutter news and resources aimed at improving your app development career. Over there, you can also subscribe to my mailing list to get the best Flutter resources delivered weekly right into your inbox. So if this video and if this whole tutorial series or course or however you want to call it helped you, give it a like and also share it with other developers who are surely going to benefit from this too. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, if you are happy that this series is already finished and see you in the upcoming tutorials.